you. My name is Ben Greeley. Uh, I, I uh, live up in Brunswick, which is about a 30 minute drive from here. Um, if you guys are visiting Portland and visiting Maine, you should make a drive up the highway and visit Brunswick because it's a beautiful little downtown and a great place to check out. But I'm not here to, <laughs> to promote uh, Brunswick. I'm here to talk about WordPress and the WordPress options table. Um, I am Director of Engineering at TenUp. Uh, TenUp is a digital agency where we specialize in developing large uh, websites for enterprise clients. Um, if you have any questions for me about uh, TenUp or about the presentation that I'm about to give, uh, definitely reach out to me or see me after the presentation. But yeah, I'm going to be talking about the WordPress options table, which um, it can cause many headaches and can cause uh, people to tear their hair out sometimes. Um, so a little background of what the WordPress options table is. Uh, the WordPress options table is where uh, WordPress stores all sorts of site settings, such as uh, plugin settings, theme settings, um, and pretty much anything else that developers may want to store there. Um, it's a pretty simple table. Uh, you can see that basically you specify an option name, a value for the option, and whether or not the option uh, should be auto-loaded into memory. And that's about it. Um, but even though this is a simple table, you should pay particular attention to this presentation if you develop WordPress themes or plugins or even just maintain a WordPress website because, like I said before, left untamed, the WordPress options table can uh, slow down your website or even worse, as I learned, the hard way. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about that story. Um, so a while back, I was working on a high traffic, uh, high traffic website. Um, there were thousands of pages on the site, it got lots of traffic every day, um, and we started getting complaints that the website was running much slower than usual, um, also started hearing weird complaints about uh, um, the WordPress admin not saving correctly. Um, when people would go into the WordPress admin and try to save a setting, uh, the changes weren't being reflected on the front end for some reason, so I decided to take a look and see what was going on. Um, my natural instinct was to blame caching, because every time we reset the cache, uh, it seemed to magically fix it. And so uh, basically I reset the cache every day for a couple of weeks um, until I figured out that something else must be going on. Uh, I decided to take a deeper look into this, the situation. Um, so when I took a look at the options table, I saw quite a few things going on there that were problematic. Um, you know, it was about 20 megabytes in size, which is over 20 times larger than it should be. Um, it turns out a popular WordPress plugin had synced with Google Search Console and pulled over all the data for that large website. Um, so Google Search Console stores like keywords for how people find your website. Um, it also says like what the top pages are that people found based on these keywords. And so there's a ton of data for a lot of pages and that just filled the options table. So that plugin was not doing what it should have been doing. Um, you know, the recommended size for the options table is about uh, one megabyte or less. And the reason for that limit is that uh, WordPress, or excuse me, that many caching plugins actually uh, by default have a one megabyte limit by default. So if you have a caching plugin installed and you try to pull over like a 20 megabytes of data over on every page load, uh, that's not going to update your, your pages on, on every page load. So it's going to be storing stale data. And that's basically what was going on with the admin uh, options not saving that I was telling you about earlier. Um, next, I looked into the themes, the custom themes PHP code, and saw some weird things going on there that we probably should have caught. Um, the add option and update option functions weren't being used correctly. Um, you can see here, this, these are the definitions of add option and update option. And you pass over a name for the option, the value, and whether, whether or not you want it to auto-load, so yes or no. Uh, by default, you can see that autoload is um, optional. It defaults to either null or yes. And when it's null, it actually saves as yes. So if you just update option and or add option and don't specify autoload, every single option that you are saving is going to be autoloaded on every single page load. Um, you know, autoloaded autoloaded options are very helpful. Um, so let's say you have 50 options that you want to use on every single page. This basically lets you grab all the options at once. But that's not very good when you have a lot of options that don't need to be on every page. So if you have you know, just some sort of weird thing you're storing there for one particular plugin or one particular page, um, it's very inefficient to have to load that on every page. Um, to illustrate the point of what should have been happening with those functions, um, this first example is storing a very large value. So this is the letter X. 
uh, repeated about a million times, and it's being stored in the options table. And because the uh, autoload is not being specified, this is going to be loaded on every single page on the website. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, like if we had passed over no uh, to the as a third parameter for the update option, that would have not loaded on every page, and we could have just pulled that option when we needed it. Um, so. I talked a little bit about what autoloading does. Um, you know, it, it basically loads things in memory so we don't have to make like 50 calls to the database, which is actually more efficient in the long run. Um, so WordPress runs this very SQL query on every single page on the website. Um, what it's doing is it's selecting all the options in the options table that are set to yes for autoload. Um, and when the table's very small, or I shouldn't say very small, but when it's a small number of rows in the table, um, this is very efficient and it's pretty fast. However, when you have a lot of rows in the options table, uh, this can take extra milliseconds. I've seen it actually take an extra second or so to actually execute this, and it can slow down your page load on every page of your site. Um, and the reason that this is so slow, you would think that like this would be something that we should actually be able to store a lot of options in. But the reason for the slowness is that WordPress does not have an index on the autoload column in WordPress. Um, so, a little background on database indexes. Um, database indexes are a data structure that allows uh, SQL and MySQL to quickly look up values in the options table, or any table, really. So, this is another lookup table where you could look for the value of yes, and it would know exactly what rows to return for that. Um, and without that index, MySQL is basically looking at every single row and saying, are you yes, are you yes, are you yes, and that could take a long time. Um, there are some disadvantages to using an index. Um, it does slow the insert, update, and delete performance. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, when you run those commands, it has to update the index again. So let's say you're updating a post in the back end, or actually updating an option in the back end. Um, that would take a little bit extra time, but it's not that much that, that much slower. Um, another disadvantage is that uh, it takes extra disk space to have this index lookup. So if you have a hosting company that doesn't want you to store a lot of data, uh, this could be problematic. Um, but if you have a large options table, um, you might want to think about using an index because the queries will get slower the more options you have in there. Um, and to illustrate this point, uh, this is a graph actually that our director of systems engineering uh, created a while back to, to illustrate the difference on the options table with uh, an index versus not having an index. So the red line here represents uh, a query that, uh, or that very same query that we saw back here. So this uh, select from the options table where the, op where the auto load equals yes. Um, that particular query on a table that does not have an index versus the blue line on the bottom, if you can tell, there's a blue line down there. Um, and that represents uh, a query, that very same query on a table that does have an index. And you can see as the table size grows, the amount of time it takes for the query to execute uh, becomes quite substantial. Um, there is this sweet spot down here where there isn't much of a difference between uh, an index or not having an index, and that's kind of where you want to shoot for, for, for the fault. Um, you know, you could have an index if you needed to store a million records, you definitely could, but by default most people probably don't. And you know you should be shooting for that like thousand five hundred records uh, sweet spot there. Um, so why does not WordPress include an index? Uh, that was a question I was asking myself as I was looking into this. Um, it turns out there's actually a pretty hot discussion about this going on in the WordPress community. Uh, there's a WordPress core ticket going back over like five years or so where developers are debating this. It's quite a lengthy conversation, um, but. That's the great thing about WordPress and open source uh, software is that you can be a part of the conversation and try to change these things that uh, aren't working well. Uh, but basically, you know, to summarize what the conversation is, you know, one reason that people are arguing against having an index is that the options table was never meant to store a lot of options or a lot of rows in the options table. So there's really no reason to have it if people keep the options table small. But as we saw with the functions that I was using earlier, those functions are very easy to use. And so if developers don't really know what they're doing and just want to store everything that they have in the options table, uh, they can very easily fill it up. So 
you know, that might be a reason for us in the future to consider having an index on the options table. Um, if you do need to have an, option, an index, uh, it's very easy to do so. Uh, you can run a query like the one here in SQL. Uh, and what you're doing is you can say create an index, give the index a, a unique name, and you say what table you want to create that index on and pass over the columns that you uh, want to have that index uh, index. And once you run that, it's pretty quick and uh, there's really no other steps needed. So going back to the original story I was telling, you know, there were some other things going on besides that large uh, that, that um, plugin that pulled over from Google Search Console. There was another bad plugin, I wouldn't say bad, but uh, a plugin that had a bug that uh, ended up filling the options table with over 5,000 rows. Um, and what it was doing was it was performing a sync. And so every minute that the, that the uh, plugin was performing a sync, it would add a row to the options table. And you know it, that sync might run for a couple of minutes at a time, but after many weeks, after many months or years, the options table got filled up. And uh, there was just a bug in the plugin that uh, let those live on and didn't clean them up later. Um, as I was talking about earlier with like the sweet spot of where you should be shooting for for the options table, you should try to make sure that you have less than 500 rows in the options table for optimal performance. Um, you know, the only way that you can do that is to make sure that you're regularly checking the options table. It's you know something that probably you don't really think of having to check because it's something that's actually very difficult to check unless you're familiar with SQL or some other tools. Um, but I'll talk about those tools in a little bit of how you can check. Um, and this is just an example of uh, what an options table looks like when it's filled up. Um, in this particular example, the plugin WPSEO, which is Yoast, um, it decided it uh, added a cache validator record, which it uses internally, I assume, for something. Um, I didn't actually look up to see what it uses this for, but it basically is just a temporary record that's added to the options table. And this is a very common issue that you see if you use Yoast. Um, it's basically just a bug in their plugin that they'll either have to fix someday or maybe they already have fixed it. Um, but this is uh, just for illustrative purposes. So I figured out what's going on. Um, so to fix it, these are the steps I took to do so. Um, the first thing I did is I ran a SQL query to delete all those extra rows. So in this SQL query, it deletes all the rows from the options table that start with WP SEO uh, sitemap. So all those 5,000 rows that got pulled over uh, got cleaned up and that definitely helped performance. Um, I also ran another SQL query. Um, this one updates specific options to not autoload. Um, so I figured out, you know, maybe that big option that I store that the letter, stores the letter X a, a million times, that probably doesn't need to be on every page. So I made sure to run an update command to make sure that wasn't loading on every page. And that definitely helped performance. Um, I went into the theme's uh, PHP code and I updated the options, or excuse me, I updated the functions that updated options and added options to uh, specify whether or not I wanted the option to autoload. Um, for the most part, most of the options did not need to autoload, so I just passed a no and that fixed that issue moving forward. And then these were some pretty easy fixes I made too. Um, the plugin that synced to a Google Search Console talks to the client and they actually didn't need to have all of Google Search Console's data in WordPress. They could just go to Google Search Console and go to it. So we turned that, uh, that sync off, which was a toggle in the plugin. Uh, and also I took the opportunity to clean up any unnecessary plugins on the site. There were some things that were just adding some options that weren't huge, but you know, if you have 10, 20 plugins that aren't being used and they're each adding 20 options, um, that can add up over time. So I just uninstalled things that weren't needed. Um, so I talked a little bit about the tools you can use, uh, or actually, that's what I'm going to talk about now, sorry. Um, I alluded to the fact that I'm going to talk about the tools. Um, one of the tools I highly recommend is uh, New Relic. So what New Relic is, is it's a service that um, shows you specific performance on your site. So in this graph here, um, you can see that this is the um, performance of I don't know, a specific page or maybe the website in general over a period of time. and it shows that you know, the PHP performance is this, and you can kind of just see like where the slowness is. In this particular graph, you know, the slowness is in my SQL queries, so if I was going to try to optimize the site, that's probably where I try to spend most of my time. 
Um, but New Relic is awesome. It also shows you reports like this one here, which help you drill into specific like WordPress hooks and functions. Um, you know, I was trying to figure out for this particular page um, why it took 146 seconds for the page to load, um, which is a pretty slow page, if you can imagine. Um, and this, this particular page was the admin ajax.php. Um, you can drill into like the do action, so you can see it was actually an action that was being slow. And if you look at the first one, create initial post types, I'm not sure. Uh, that was actually a pretty slow, uh, that was actually a pretty fast um, process or function that ran that took three milliseconds. You can just go through and look at the time it took. There was this one down here that was four capabilities to add caps. It took 146 seconds for some reason. And you know that gives me the, the information to dig into the PHP code and figure out why that was slow. Um, this example doesn't have anything to do with the options table, um, but if the options table was being slow, I could basically drill into the uh, performance likewise and be able to see exactly how slow that was and be able to tweak things as needed. Uh, another tool that I highly recommend using is WPCLI, which is a command line tool which lets you execute uh, WordPress commands via your command line. Uh, this particular uh, command here lets you see all the options in the options table and also let you see the size in bytes of each option. Um, just to kind of show you what that looks like. Um, I will run this on a site that has a pretty good options table. So this returns like all the options in the options table. This is the number of uh, bytes that are uh, on each option. And you can see that everything is pretty small. Like this is like, you know, a kilobyte. Uh, four kilobytes, so there's really not a lot here that I'm too worried about. There's probably like a hundred options or so here, so it's a pretty, you know, small options table. But if I ran this on another site that was having issues, um, so in this one you can see the numbers are much larger. Um, so this options table is full. Uh, there's WPSEO is pretty problematic. It's like, I would say problematic, but it's adding a lot of options to the options table. Um, you know, the overall number isn't that different. I think in this one as well, there's like 100 rows in the options table. But the size is what I'm concerned about here. And so this just lets you check in and see what plugins or how plugins are filling your options table. Uh, jump back in. Um, another, another tool you can use is just using SQL or MySQL. Um, if you have access to run SQL commands, um, basically run a command like the one here. Um, and this command tells me all the op like a sum of the size of all the options that are set to autoload. So if you remember, I told you you should have your autoload options be less than one megabyte. Um, if I ran this on one of those databases, so I'm going to run this on the, uh, on the database that I have a lot of options in the options table. So you can see that the size is actually 3.5 megabytes for all of those options. And that's problematic, especially if I was using a caching plugin, um, because that wouldn't be refreshing on the page. Um, likewise, if I had if I had a site that was doing well, so I just switched to like a different a different database, and so this one is actually more around what you should be seeing. And this is a, a fresh WordPress install, so that's why you're seeing it that small. Uh, so, okay, so in, to summarize what I've been talking about today, um, you know, the best practice is to make sure that your options table is less than one megabyte in size. Um, always make sure that you're, you know, monitoring your website uh, to make sure that it's less than a megabyte. Um, be sure to check the uh, functions in your PHP code to specify whether or not the options should be auto-loaded. Um, that's something that's easily missed, especially if you don't understand what the auto-load parameter does. Uh, keep the number of rows in the options table to less than 500. Um, you know, you can go a bit above that if you need to, but you know, performance is degraded, especially if you have hundreds of thousands of rows. So it's just a good rule of thumb to keep it small. Uh, and if you need to have a lot of rows, you definitely can store a lot of data in the options table if you need to, but you just need to add an index on the auto load column. Um, but yeah. I can also answer any more specific questions anyone has about like how to store data. Um, there's a lot to talk about here, and I just wanted to make sure I got through like the.
best practices for options before I dug into other stuff. And what your slides be on? Uh, on yeah, I'll put them on my Twitter feed um, and uh, try to. I think I can send them to work campaign yeah. and like, add it to the site. Fair enough, but I liked all the oh, okay, media and movie references. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's important. Um, you know, one thing I did not touch on, but I think we have a little time. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Um, it's like, you know, what if you did want to store a lot of data somewhere? Like, obviously, the options table isn't where you want to store everything for your plugin. Um, you know, I would recommend to actually create a custom post type that is private and that nobody can ever see and just use that to store all the data. And so that adds your, um, your, your data that you need to add to your plugin into the post table. And the post table has indexes that are very efficient, um, it works very well, and you can keep you know, millions of records in there without it slowing down too, too much. Um, so that's you know, a, a natural progression from the options table. Um, also, the options table stores transients. Um, so transients is like WordPress's way of caching. And if you don't have a caching plugin set up, it stores things in the options table, and that can also fill the options table up. And so having an uh, uh, object caching plugin uh, definitely will help out performance as well. Any questions? Yes, sir. C could you write um, like a small plugin to like monitor the size of the options table, and then just like report to you when it hits 500 rows or like? One meg or Definitely, something. I think that some people actually have them notify you, or what was that? Or just or no, have it notify you when it hits like 500 or something. Yeah, yeah, I think it definitely could be done. Um, I know that there are some plugins out there that people created to basically look at the same thing. So um, maybe the plugins already do this. Um, as long as they themselves don't write to the options table. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me uh, let me just make one thing clear. Like, it's not bad to store things to the options table. Just excessive amounts of things to the options table. Like, maybe it's not where you should store a record of everybody that logged in over the past year. Um, but it might be the right place to store like the setting that somebody wants to have on their site. Like, whether they want it to be a blue background or a red background. Or like that. And you said the better option is to put your data into the WP post? That's one recommendation. Okay. Yeah, so if you have a custom, you can create custom post types in WordPress, and, yeah. and those can be private and not accessible from the front end. And you can basically set up your plugin or function or, or theme to basically store anything you want there. Mm -hmm. That would be a recommendation, but I think it all depends. Some people decide to make custom tables. Um, right. I've never run into a situation where I need to create a custom table, really, but um, it all depends on what you need. Yeah. And why not a custom table? Just because then you have to figure out indexing and stuff? Yeah, so a lot of the WordPress functions work really well with the posts. So, like, there's a lot of WordPress functions that uh, basically uh, assume you're using the post table. And so you can pass over the post type and you can reuse all those. If you have your own table, you have to rewrite a lot of those basically. Right. And that would just take a little more time than okay. I would want to get into. Okay. You certainly could. I know a lot of uh, plugins do that. Um, I think Gravity Forms has a lot of tables. Um, I think it all depends on how much data you want to store too. I know that Gravity Forms actually logs every single view of a form, which fills things up, and that's probably nothing you want to have in your post table. Yeah. I don't have that separate. So it all depends, but that's you know one thing that I would probably look at. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. There's a plugin called WPCFM, I think, that sort of saves your options and allows you to load and reload them. Are you familiar with that? Does it collide? No. Okay. What's that do? It's a way of saving a complete configuration of a website so you can load all your plugins and just load in all the options all at once and kind of oh. get to a start point. So you can pass like the options table from one site to Kind of, yeah, but it has a whole GUI built on it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I think the options table is one area where you know, it's often overlooked for improvements, but as you can see, like these queries are run every single page, so it's definitely an area that WordPress should look into improving it by default. I haven't actually commented on that thread yet, but I'm kind of inspired to actually put my two cents in there because I've, I've had this talk, I've given this talk before, and the more I talk about it, the more I don't really understand why we don't have an index in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. just by default. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Especially people are just going to trash around in it. Right. Yeah. And is it really that simple to make an index, which you, you wrote that one line? Yeah, so I can execute it and disprove it, I hope it works. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah. So if I go into this, this 
database that was pretty inefficient. Um, run it without a back support slash. So this basically now has an index in the options table. If I go to options, I think I can view the data structure here. Right. It's there in the create syntax. What's that? It's there in the uh, create table statement. Oh, down here? Okay, here we go. Where the heck is it? Oh, okay, here we go. I'll load index. So, yeah, it's pretty easy oh, to make them. But it does have some performance downsides, as I was pointing out. But, you know, if you have people using the admin, they might be a little more patient, you know, they can wait a half a second. It's not like it adds an extra five seconds, it's more like milliseconds or maybe a couple of seconds tops. And that would only be if you're saving something for the opposite. Exactly. If you're saving a post, it shouldn't, yeah, yeah. shouldn't affect it much. Exactly. I mean, posts have their own indexes that's updating every time. Um, so, you know, sometimes people find that the options, or excuse me, the post table can be slow for certain queries and they add their own indexes in there as well. Yeah, and how fast does it does the auto index help it? Well, it helps it significantly, right? You have the two graphs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just it's kind of mind boggling. It's, it's just right. You just have to write that one line. It auto indexes, and yep. your chart is going to look totally different. Yep. So. I mean, there's a lot more stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, so, you know, this could be detrimental to a site if you have you know a million rows in in your table and you don't have much disk storage for whatever reason, like you have like a $2 a month uh, hosting company or something like that, um, you might not have that much storage to play around with. But yeah, it's pretty easy to have that, and this is built into most uh, database, uh, SQL databases. Um, so you can, like this isn't, isn't just a MySQL uh, functionality. Yeah. Right, any other questions? Thank you. I'll post this on the